We've had a good lunch, filled our bellies, and we're ready to talk about National Library Week. And in our Be the Best folder, I have a Word doc titled um, April 2018 School Library Month. And we actually have a, a school library week in April and I don't know, I didn't write it on here, did I? Here's news. Starts on the 10th. Yeah. Okay, so Monday night, the night through the 13th. <clears throat> so, uh, the theme this year is making connections. And I struggled with something really clever, um, like a a something fun that goes around that theme. I, you know, I've got um, get connected, and you can think of a, like electricity, you know, plugging it in, a puzzle, connecting the pieces, and you could have, you know, your students, your school, I mean, your staff, your parents, your, and, and have puzzle pieces, um, and do something each day of the week, or you know, centering around puzzles. Um, uh, connect the dots. You could have some puzzles and games with connect the dots. Um, <clears throat> but I, I went in and I looked around different places. Um, with the students and really with about anywhere, just to put it out there that it's National School Library Week. Um, I, I printed some of these off and you guys can uh, take what you want and uh, make, they just make a table pen. And if you wanna put something on this side about your library, um, You just fold them and I don't have it right yet, but the bottoms put them together. And you can put them on in your library. Uh, you could send them for the board meeting that week and make sure they're out around from there um, for that month. You could, uh, I need to sit down and be in front of my camera. Um, you could uh, lunchroom, put them in the lunchroom. You could even take them downtown and put them in cafes and and then just make sure you've got something about your library on the back side of it. And um, so I'll I'll leave these out for you to go ahead. But the templates for them are on that April 28th Library Month and under student table tent templates. And they've got all of them down here and you can print them those colors or you can print them plain and then run them off on color paper, construction paper, card stock. Um, and I just choose the, chose the ones that were uh, about kind of like school library stuff because adding Minecraft to curriculum may inspire more future engineers than mathematics alone. Because not everything is on, in, on the internet is true. Because the best search engine in the library is the librarian. Um, because students who spend time reading over the summer end up on the honor roll in the fall. Uh, 
there's a real cute one with text, like when you're texting, because texts are fine, but seriously, people also need to see real sentences. And it's all written in this. Um, because fake news can have real world consequences. Because more than a quarter of, a, of US households don't have a computer with computer connection. Um, because learning to read comes before reading to learn. Because five out of five doctors agree reading allows the children support brain development. Because hands on learning builds stronger brains. Because the library card is the more, most important school supply of all. So I'll leave those out and you guys can. And I even have the, the masters. You know, one of you wants to take all of those and you can split the rest. Yeah. So on that page, that's where you're going to find um, libraries transform. Uh, <clears throat> there is a spokesperson this year, and I'm not familiar with the author, but he's uh, written some award winning books. And I'll see it's back on this page. Uh, They've got a little blurb. I don't know, do you guys recognize All American Boys, Ghosts, Patina, Patina, Long Way Down, um, Miles Morales, Spider-Man. Um, he has a little blurb that you can put on your, you have a Facebook page or a web, the school website that's promoting make the connection. Um, it may be on ASL. I thought I had put it in here, but that's just who he is and maybe he's got it on his web page. I'll find that. I meant to put that in there for you. Um, it's probably with AASL. Maybe we'll come across it here in a minute. But there's a quote and then he, he talks about how important school libraries are. Um, are you guys familiar with Drop Everything and Read? Is anybody doing it? You ever have you ever ever done it? I think they're doing it in the classroom. In the classroom, you know, you might offer. Uh, it was one of the mo more popular things I did in St. John, and we always did it during National Library Week. And we we put it in a newspaper, and we sent flyers to all the businesses. And we have a town square, so we if it was nice all the kids and their teachers k-12 if you know you could get the older kids to participate they didn't have tests or were gone and we dropped everything they brought brought the books and brought out blankets and sat in the, the grass and read for 20 minutes and some of them that were the little kids they had people reading to them and um it was really fun when the adults came down and they'd sit in the park benches and read their books and birds a store owner would close up and come down and read with us. Um, we just did it one afternoon. We just, like after lunch at 30 or 2, that was when we dropped everything and read. And, um, you know, when you can get the basketball boys or, you know, somebody that the kids are real familiar with, have the mayor come down. Um, but that that link, there's all kinds of different um, activities they, people have done and they posted it up here. So there's different things they suggest. But um, it all that drop everything and read was PR work, legwork. You know, getting the word out and it's 
sometimes a personal invitation, calling and say, hey, we're doing this. Come in, I'll help you choose a book or bring whatever you're reading right now or a magazine. Some people don't like to read books, but bring your cereal box along and, you know, read. So um, I tucked that in there. Have any of you done a library snapshot day? Um, ALA promotes this, but the Kansas libraries also promote it. And they, it's picking any day, and sometimes it's fun to do it during National Library Week, where you just keep track of everything that's going on in your library that day and take pictures. But, you know, if you've got kids coming in for research, pictures of that. Um, if someone just drops in to use the dictionary, you record that. It's kind of just a running record, recording what's going on for that day. And then you can, um, you can uh, turn it in. Um, they've got some kind of a, a walk through it. I think Kansas has always done it in November. Um, but but then you've got some stats and you can report in the newspaper or the newsletter. Um, this is just a snapshot of what happens in our library. And then you can say, coming up next month, we've got you know, whatever you've got going on. And um, it's just another way to get the word out, promote your library. Um, and I have a Pinterest page that um, I've started collecting ideas. And, um, and I also wanted to hear what, what you've been doing um, in your libraries. Let me find my board. But my, the, the link to the Sikila School Library case is at the bottom of my email. Um, see if I've got anything special going on. There's maker spaces if you want to look and see some ideas. Um, Library Month activity. Um, have you seen this? Shred a book. Take one of your old books and take it down to the shredder and then find a big jar and um, you can have a guessing game. You know, a, a little passive program. You don't, you've got it just sitting out and they can guess what book it is and you can have a uh, trip down to the Dairy Queen and, you know, whoever, whoever um, <laughs> yeah. Um, right now, I've sent a lot out about the Tournament of Books with Mar March Madness, um, and I think you probably would have had to have started this earlier, but for next year, you know, during the week of March, before March, you know, with March Madness, and you'll be there in, in, uh, in April, they'll be finishing up. So you could start a tournament and, and work it down. And all they've done is make a bracket and you started out with probably books, depending on, you know, if it's K-12, you're gonna have a variety or you're gonna break it down by grade. Um, but I think people have had a lot of fun with that. And uh, if you put some of this away in a folder, um, it would be a fun thing to do, you know, even if you did it for K-6 and then the older kids have two, two different things. Um, I found a Monopoly game too, that um, Libraryopoly, and then, um, you know, when each class comes in, 
Let's see what they've got. I'm hoping it's big enough we can Okay, I don't think you can read it, but they've got uh, different authors' names. Reardon, Lowry, Duncan are the three. Um, the treasure community chest says, follow the directions. So they've, these people have shared their game with you. And, uh, you know, if you want it bigger, you'll probably have to make your own, but you've got the template there. And um, they give you the cards and everything of what you can put in there. So classes can come in and I'm guessing they, you know, you just go around the board. Maybe you'd have teams or something and um, just do what, just like normal. Um, get out of jail, just resting, says. And here is Create a Poem. April is also Poetry Month. Mm -hmm. yeah, on my Pinterest page, yeah. So, uh, poetry, you see their poetry. But you just take a whole bunch of words, cut them out different sizes and shapes, and then let them create a poem on a leaf. You know, it's going to be a very small poem, three lines or something, and then they can put it up on the tree. Um, with, I think, his sixth, seventh, and eighth in St. John, I did a, um, where they, they come down and they, they've written their own poetry or found a poem they really like, and they were, you were beatniks, and with the uh, beat of the, the poem. You know, they all did that with how you were reading it and then they did their fingers and then we, we, had, um, we had a microphone so you, could, you had to get up and stand up and say your poem. And then we had uh, not real coffee, but a cafe where you, you could have a snack and a drink before you went back to school. That was pretty popular. But have any of you had a coloring? Uh, not a big one like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, it's sitting and, uh, and I've had a puzzle out on the table too, just puzzle going and, um, coloring table with a giant color sheet. It doesn't really say where she got it, but, um, Maybe you've got a, oh, Color, color Me Murals is where she got it. So these are all kind of Christmas ones, but there's a mandala, that one that's on there. Or if you had, um, oh, that's a price. Yeah, it's a sale price too. But I wonder if you had um, some high school students that would create one for you, you know, uh, in art class or something. You can always find ways to get around it. Does anybody have one of those great big printers? Have you seen those? A couple of schools I've been to, they've got, it prints out like poster size. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Signs, uh-huh. Uh -huh. um, bingo. 
Facebook bingo. Um, there's lots of templates out there for it. And this is, guess how many books are in our library? That we, so what are some of, do you guys want to share some of the things you've done? Yeah, just having something out and promoting your library that week. Is, um, they've got some proclamations. Um, let me see if here with administrators. Um, and I don't have it highlighted, but I'll, I'll get it because there, it's there in the ASL stuff. You can have your city proclaim it, National School Library Week. You could have your board of education proclaim it's National Library Week. It's a meeting before, you know, like in March, 1st of April, if you have it. Um, and Workers' Day. Are you, if you're the worker, <laughs> well, yeah, if you have any volunteers or there was a list of things here that you can, you can um, turn your name in and it will be on the National Workers Day. You're a star and it's on a map online that you're the, you're the worker for your library. And you could say check this out or something. People that have turned in something about their librarian. Um, so connecting with your staff, making connections in the library, connecting with your staff. Um, this gal that was at the Kansas Library Association uh, conference last year, um, she's got some wonderful ideas and um, it ended up on this national blog from uh, Shannon McClintock Miller. She's, she's kind of a li school library rock star right now. She's written books and she's working with future ready librarians. But um, they've got templates and that template is in in your folder, blank though. But um, I can't, let's see, how do I make this, how do I zoom and make it bigger, Andy? My page. Um, Here. Okay, that I got it. Way too big. Okay, and it's still kind of hard to read, but there, the library is more than books, and you know, promote something else that you you share in your library. Um, what will you do for them? You will pull books for a, a unit. You do that for them. Um, sign up in the library for, you know, a day to come in or a class period. Um, uh, I can show you the state library website databases. Um, I'll co-teach with you. I'll, I'll 
church, talk to your students about Dewey Decimal, you know, just it's on that square, put some of the things you would do. Um, I can uh, book reports, I can help students find the perfect book for the, you know, and <clears throat> Then some of them turned, she showed some other things. If you want to get fancy, you know, you can uh, put a code there, QR code, and send them someplace. Um, this one, research help, reader's advisory you do. I've got tools that will help you research. Um, resource requests, you know, how do, how do I tell them how do you, how you want them to contact you about. And I think there's probably a lot of cute ways. I mean, this one is State Library. Um, they've just got fun things, maybe just quotes about libraries. And maybe the kids could put, make a cute that says, this is what I like about the library. You know, and they have to have one, two, three, at least four things, I would think. And um, and then let them make the cube, you know. Um, she just wrote fun things in there. Down at the bottom, they've got um, some different shapes you can download if you like. So I thought that was. That was a good thing. Um, tell your teachers, you know, you know some good apps and go to the ASL um, best apps for teaching and learning and offer to demo that one day during that week. You know, choose one you like or one that you think will be important. Um, they've got, um, Topics here, books, STEM, uh, humanities and arts. You could do, uh, you know, just to tell the teacher, come in on your plan period in 15 minutes, I'll show you a couple of cool apps. Um, off the beaten apps. Um, a lot of times uh, they try to keep them no cost or low cost, but it will say you will um, I'm going to need dollar signs. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have time and want to play with a couple of them and then say, hey, I can show you this, or on that block, just say, here's a good place to find some new apps that you might find helpful and let them go figure it out. Um, there's also best websites for teaching and learning. And I really am not Buncey, I've heard of before. But they give a short description, so you can just pick, pick them and see what what's out there and be, be an expert for the day. Show off a little bit. Um, inviting them to, to a deer time. Um, this, these were a couple of just articles I thought you might find interesting. Um, an article about collaborating with, you know, what kind of teachers do you have in your, on your staff and how do you work with them? I never have enough time, teacher. There's the, uh, the dream teacher, you know, she'll, she'll work with you at the end no, no matter what. Um, the denial teacher, you know, maybe they're not even, they're not at that point to work with you. So that was just an interesting article that might help you. And there's a program, One Book, One School. 
and um, it describes the program and how it worked in this school library. But I mean, the teachers, the administration, the students, the parents, if they want to, are all reading the same book. Um, and there is um, there is a cost with that. I mean, you could you could do it on your own, but there's questions that go along with the book that you choose, and um, you can have speakers come in. It it can be as big or as small deal that you want to make it. What were what did you guys read? Remember? <laughs> War story. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. little festival yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's that's kind of a cool way to get make contact and connections with a, a whole bunch of different people um, with the administrator the deer um, this is another article making the connection with principals Things that you can do to help your principal that he's going to really appreciate, you know, as the school librarian, what kind of things can you dig up and make him look good and want to keep you around type article. And, and that's making the principal connection. And the rest of this is pretty much, um, you know, don't forget your parents. Um, the Kansas Board of Education, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put links um, where it says Kansas Board of Education and Kansas legislatures, because if you just send them an email with a couple of pictures of what's been going in, on in your library, and a statement how important it is to, you know, our, li our school library is important to us. Um, really like to hear what's going on. Or invite your person part of whatever you're doing that day. Um, each, each, there's, each district, each region has their representative. Um, and you'll be able to find that on the map that I send you, who's your rep. And then the same with the legislators. Um, and we talked a little bit about community and uh, and what you might do um, and your local board, the proclamation, the table tents, um, any, any, toot your own horn. When you've got stuff going on, don't just let the teachers know or send a note home to the parents. Um, tell your newspaper and tell some of these people that have the purse string, you know, that you've got some fun things going on, especially during National Library Week. Um, don't leave them out. You'll be surprised. I had, when I, when we did the um, Pike Valley kid, one of the, their library back, they hadn't had a school library in the high school for eight years. And um, you guys know the story. They, um, they went to their counselor and said, you don't have anything in that library, even if they let us go in, it's older than eight years, <laughs> you know? We, and they, could, they couldn't really get down to their public library because when it's open, they're either in school or in practice and they couldn't get down there, you know, it wasn't open then. And it, it's a small town, but they couldn't do that, you know, either. So 
the kids, the counselor sent them to a workshop to write grants. And they went to the school board and said they wanted to do this. And they, their, their grant proposal, you guys know Dane G. Hansen, probably. The, um, they got enough money to remodel the library, paint it, get new furniture. Um, they put up a wall because it was like a, a whole classroom and enough money to get some new books. And so when they had their grand opening in the, the fall and the spring, we had them invite, you know, their legislators and their Kansas State School Board rep and they all came. I mean, they, you know, they wanted to be a part of that. So. Don't be afraid to just tell them we're doing cool stuff. Come, come see us. You know, keep them notified of what's going on. Um, so that is my. I, that's what I just. I usually, you know, Pinterest can really sometimes trigger some fun things to do. And there is, I mean, if you, even not on my, my Pinterest page, the school library Pinterest page, um, maybe that would spark some ideas of something different to do. Um, but have some fun that weekend and make sure you make connections. Um, with the theme being made connection. Anybody else have a program that's worked really well? I know she did. Uh, Dr. Seuss had some fun, fun activities going on for her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're counting on you now. Yeah. Um, does anybody celebrate uh, May the 4th in Star Wars? Yeah, that might be something high school might get into. Have, have May 4th, and I don't know what day of the year, I mean, what day of the month it is this year, but uh, it got pretty big. <laughs> we had um, a couple of teachers that were kind of Star Wars, autos and they would get the kids really excited about and we just did dumb stuff. we had a star wars academy you know and they had sabers that they learned to fight with and it was just, just cool needles and um agility you know they uh, so you could really end the week with a bang we had yoda punch Lime, uh -huh. lime sherbet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That sounds like fun. So what does it stand for? 
Oscar, our students, our students care about reading. That's awesome. I might put that in the newsletter. <laughs> Have some fun with it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> Uh -huh. uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just be a reward. That's kind of a a neat get them thinking. It's a special place, and you know, offer that to your teacher. Met their goal and mm -hmm. well, has this sparked any ideas for what you might you, something you might do? for um, National Library Week? Did you ever have a reception and just have the teachers in before school with muffins and juice and just show them some of your new books or? Well, gals, I'm gonna cut it short. I. I've shared my wealth of knowledge, <laughs> um, but you can look at those magazines back there. Um, you can ask me to send you the old, you know, like if it's March now, I can send you the February and check it out to you if you want to see. Um, you know, if you get stuck, I know I've given you lots of different things to to find books now. And um, I, we've got two more of these. One is in uh, Salina on July 31st. It's a Wednesday. Um, it's going to be at the Salina Public Library. Um, they have a center called McKenzie Center across the street north, and it's got rooms in it. And um, then I have one more. And they'll each have a topic. And you guys, if there's something you want to learn more about, pop me a note, and we'll put it in with the, um, with the be the best, just polishing up, you know, what we already know. Um, and November 14th, and that one's going to be at Hayes Public Library. Yeah. There'll be something different each time, and and we'll do the Zoom too. And then don't forget uh, spring spring fling ought to be fun May twenty third. So thank you. We're gonna we're gonna stop our our Zoom meeting now and have a nice afternoon. Thank you.